Somewhere. My brother's gone, and I'm wearing this for his memory. But uh, till next year, August. Hey you, my name is Julian. Welcome to the weekly Wednesday vlog. I already filmed a vlog here in this barn, in this shirt. I had this amazing lighting setup to work with, so I had to film the vlog here. And yep, I'm in a barn. I just want to talk about this. And this is the A7R. Oh, it's the A7R. I thought it was the A7R too. But okay, it's the A7R. And it's really good because it costs a kidney and a half. So I was using the Sony A7S for almost a year and I've really become addicted to its super awesome low light capability, which is something that the A7R is missing because it's got a slightly smaller sensor and a way bigger resolution. And I got to work with this beast yesterday on the shoot and I'm gonna make a separate vlog about that for next week or the week after that or so. Today I just wanna talk about this. And the reason being it's already Wednesday midday and I, I'm working at camps right now. We still have to take kids to the swimming pool and I have to do the vlog till tonight, so it's just gonna be a little talky, what walkie talky vlog. So honestly, I've kind of been spoiled by its amazing low light with the 12 megapixel sensor, and it's really great for videos. I can say that right off the bat. With an external recorder, you can do the whole 4K thing. I could literally bump it up to like 10,000, and it'll still make a decent shot I could use, especially with some denoise software in post. Obviously, that was a huge leap from the D3300, which I was using before that, and I got used to it, and then coming back to this, a7R which even at about 1000 ISO you can already start seeing grain and noise it was a little bit disappointing I guess but again that's because of me because of my subjective opinion the fact that I was spoiled by the A7S which is what leads me to believe that the perfect balance is the regular A7 tada or the A7 III or the A7 IV which should be coming out in a couple years from now so my opinion my conclusion for these cameras is if that you're doing a lot of video and some photo on the side, or if you're doing photo for mostly Instagram and other social media, the A7S is perfect because it's super C in the dark and it's got great video. If you're doing prints in fashion and, and like, or you are, or you crop your photos a lot, then this is good because it's got a huge resolution. But the minus is the workflow is pretty difficult because even with my semi-decent laptop, it takes ages to import the pictures and ages to, to edit them because they're so big. They're what, like seven? thousand pixels by four and a half thousand pixels or something of the sort and the a7 or the a7 II or the a7 III is kind of the perfect balance in between which is what I'm shooting for eventually as my the camera I'm gonna settle on for a while maybe until the a9 or something because it's got the best of both worlds it's got a decently sized sensor it's got a decent resolution it can shoot 4k at 100 frames per second I do believe and it's got great photos that you can crop and print if you need to. So I pretty much got to base zero because that's literally what the whole point of the A7 and the A7R and the A7S lineup was. Thank you for wasting your time on this video. I'm gonna see you guys next week. Come, come much, say hi. How much does it cost? You already, you already know this special guest from before, Q previous video. Okay, so the first part is over. Cha -ching! And now you get to meet Imer. <laughs> now he's employed at the same horse stalls that I work in, but... No. No. No, no I don't have a t-shirt. Let's go. Yes. 